We begin with uh, breaking news. It appears to be case closed on the search for a suspect in a car burglary interrupted. San Antonio police said they found the suspect suffering from gunshot wounds at a nearby hospital. Katrina Weber is there on Woodlake Parkway near Old Seguin Road. And Katrina, we understand police say the person who shot him is not facing any charges. Well, that's right. This is kind of a complicated story, so bear with me. Now, they say the person who did the shooting actually owned the car. He interrupted what they believe was a car burglary and shot the man who he says was trying to break into his car. Now, that man who was shot ended up here at this Baptist neighborhood hospital. Now, you see a car there on that tow truck. They believe that he was in that car when he left the house where they believe he was shot as he was trying to break into a car. We have some video from that location as well. It was about a half mile from here on a street called Caribou Creek. Now the homeowner, the person who lived in the home says about 3.30 this morning, he realized someone was breaking into his car, ran outside and then shot that person. Uh, police did find a lot of evidence, about 10 shell casings or more at the house. They believe that that homeowner, that car owner fired all of those shots at the person who he says was breaking into his car. A short time later, police got a call about a man walking into this Baptist neighborhood hospital and collapsing. And that man told them that he was shot at another location and walked there. But police searched the parking lot where they found a car full of blood, which they believe he arrived at the hospital in. They say that there was a second person in that car with him, but that person was long gone by the time San Antonio police arrived. So they have someone being treated for gunshot wounds in both of his legs, who they believe was trying to break into a car when he was shot by the owner of the car. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right. Thank you, Katrina. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, February 27th. Thanks for joining us. And we're having a wild weather week, I guess, if you will. We are. We, and this time yesterday, we had fog kind of south and east of town. Justin, where is it this morning? Mostly to the west now. So we're seeing it around Castorville, the west side of San Antonio and around Hondo. Uh, but it's going to be hit or miss this morning. And so you want to take it slow still. It's another one of those mornings. Hey, I want to show you a picture real quick on our KSAT Connect. I know it's kind of hard to see on this screen, but there is a cardinal there. You got another one over here. I believe this is the uh, the female, right? So the male's got the beautiful red colors. Uh, and then you get the female uh, cardinal there, but a uh, cool shot. This is from Irma. Uh, she sent this in, got both of them in the same photo. So we appreciate it. Also, you can see some flowers blooming there. Just goes to show you spring is, is uh, almost here. Uh, we're going to see some cooler weather, though, next couple of days. Uh, there's like the visibility map, uh, Bernie Stage, Hondo, Kerrville, Port of State, Castroville. Those are all the areas where fog has been an issue. Now at the airport, we've seen the visibility go from four miles to three miles. So it's starting to come down a little bit, and I think we're going to see more fog here around San Antonio. So foggy start. Uh, then by noontime, we're at 75. Clouds clear out. It's going to be another warm one. 86 is our forecast, uh, and, uh, well above average. But if you're hoping for some changes, it gets here tomorrow. Just before sunrise, cold front moves through. And tomorrow will be a very different day. 65, mostly cloudy, very windy. And then it gets even cooler on Thursday. We're going to talk all about this weather roller coaster that we're on coming up. But let's get over to RJ now and uh, just look at some of that fog on some of the Transkei cameras. Is it is it thickening up in spots? Oh, absolutely, yeah, Justin. So uh, just got off the phone with Transguide. Guide, asked them to pull up our camera here. That is the farthest west in terms of Trans Guide. And you just take a look here behind me. US 90 at State Highway 2, uh, 211 actually headed out there to Castorville, Medina Valley area. You can see that there is just a thick blanket of fog in this area right now. Again, 90 State Highway 211. This is the camera that is farthest west here uh, that we can look at here in terms of Trans Guide traffic cameras. Now traffic is getting through this area right now, but again, it is very low visibility out there for many parts of our area, especially as Justin just mentioned, Castroville, Medina Valley area. Keep that one in mind if you're about to head out in those areas right now. Uh, we're still following the latest here on this crash off of uh, Roosevelt off of Loop 410. So it's being reported by the San Antonio Fire Department website, have multiple units out there, and again, still trying to get an idea of the severity of what is going on out there, but this is off of 410, so not exactly on the highway, but again, Roosevelt, this is where Roosevelt cuts off and becomes 281 southbound. Something to just kind of keep in mind if you're heading down this area. A lot of people use Roosevelt to get in and around the south side, something that we will continue to monitor as we make our, through, our way through the 6 o'clock hour. Rest of the city, everything else is looking pretty good for the most part, but I do want to bring up again, we are seeing this construction that's taking place on the north side, and uh, again, not a major part of
started construction here southbound uh, 281 at Marshall uh, in between Wilderness Oak and Stone Oak Parkway. But I'm going to show you a camera here that kind of indicates that what we're looking at there in 281 and Wilderness Oak right now. And you can see again another area, very low visibility. Again, they had one of the lanes here closed off in this area for some signage work that they were doing out there. But you could just see based on what we're seeing out that outside with the conditions, uh, sort of what we're looking at in terms of our traffic situation right now. But we'll continue to monitor this and uh, give you more updates as they become available to us. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. You this morning, San Antonio fire investigators are working to figure out what caused a house fire overnight. This happened around 1.30 a.m. in the 800 block of Northwest 20th Street. That is near Liao Street on the west side. Firefighters say that flames burned the front half of the house. No one was home at the time and no injuries were reported. It's also been a busy and violent night across the Alamo City. Take a look at this map. San Antonio police responded to multiple shootings and cuttings overnight. We'll be going over the details of most of these incidents throughout GMSA today. Let's start with an attack that police say almost ended with a man's hand almost cut off with a machete. It happened around 11 last night on Mossy Creek, not far from Marbach on the west side. Police say the victim was at a woman's house who was married and separated from her husband. That's when the husband showed up at the house, found the two together and attacked the other man with a machete. We're told the attack nearly cut the victim's hand off. The suspect was detained. The victim was taken to the hospital in serious condition. Also overnight, deputies are trying to figure out what led to a stabbing at a bar. This is video from where the victim showed up at 1230 on Crestway near Windcrest. However, it happened at a bar at Loop 410 in Nacogdoches. Right now, it's not clear how it happened or the suspects involved, but we do know the victim was stabbed in the arm and rushed to the hospital. And the violence continued in another incident, this one on North Medina near West Commerce. Police are trying to figure out what happened, but they say a man was slashed several times on the arm and leg. We're told the suspect may have also been hurt. Right now it is unclear what led to the attack. One other news this morning, there is newly released police body camera video from inside Joel Osteen's Lakewood Church in Houston. You see some of that video playing behind us here in the studio. That was during that shooting earlier this month. The images show the suspect, a mother with her seven year old son. As ABC's Muriel Villarreal reports, the video also shows that mother carrying two rifles, then opening fire with officers praying and firing back. Newly released body camera video showing the violent gun battle inside Joel Osteen's Houston megachurch. Officers feet away from the shooter Janice Moreno as she begins firing inside Lakewood Church's atrium just before a Spanish service set to start. Surveillance video outside the arena shows Moreno wearing a trench coat, pulling her seven-year-old son and a large bag with AR-style weapons from the back. People running for cover as she opens fire inside. Blue, 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 blue. Moreno's son seen here covering his ears, then reaching for his mother before she pulls away. <laughs> Off-duty officers working security along with uniformed police engaging Moreno who fires dozens of rounds. You can hear one of the officers praying on the body camera. Father God, just be with us. Yeah, 42 item 2 is going to be a female. She's down right now. Before officers take down Moreno. We have a that little boy has been through six surgeries at least, but a bit of good news from his grandmother who posted online that he has been taken off a ventilator finally and he is breathing on his own. Mireya Villarreal, ABC News, Fort Worth, Texas. In the morning headlines, President Biden and former President Donald Trump both planning to visit different Texas border towns on Thursday. Both will hit hot spots in an effort to gain some sort of political advantage on the immigration issue. Biden is headed to Brownsville. Trump will visit Eagle Pass. President Biden tweeted he'll speak with Brownsville law enforcement and Border Patrol agents about the situation at the border. The Trump camp has not yet announced what the former president will do during his time in Eagle Pass. And President Biden says he is hopeful there will be a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas as soon as next Monday. The White House has advocated for and acted as a middleman in talks for that possible ceasefire for weeks now. The main goal is the return of every hostage from Hamas, hands inside the Gaza Strip. Well, I hope by the, the beginning of the weekend, I mean the end of the weekend, 
At least my, my, my national security advisor tells me that we're close. We're close. We're not done yet. And my hope is by next Monday, we'll have a ceasefire. The White House says issues have been resolved in terms of Hamas insisting on a full withdrawal of Israeli forces and an end to the war. Sources close to the situation told the Associated Press that Hamas has softened its position ahead of an agreement on the first phase of this potential deal. Tuesday morning, uh, February 27th, right now it is 610, 66 degrees. Well, we hear the word narcissist tossed around a lot these days, but have you ever stopped to think about what it truly means? After the break, we're going to hear from a licensed counselor about the word and why it might do more harm than good. Outside with live cam, be on the lookout for fog yet again this morning, and we are seeing quite a bit more over San Antonio International Airport this morning. Justin says the biggest problems are essentially west of San Antonio on your Tuesday. We'll check in with him and talk to RJ about traffic. If you scroll through social media or talk to friends, chances are you'll come across the word or term narcissist. Well, it's a trendy word and actually one of the most Google terms on the internet. But mental health experts want you to hold off on using it so often to describe people. One therapist tells our Stephania Jimenez why throwing the label narcissist around is so easily is harmful. So narcissism, when, I, when you hear that word, you see that word, what comes to mind? They're controlling, they don't allow you to be an individual or think for yourself. I, I think of someone basically that's super into themselves, like uncaring, unfeeling, um, just doesn't really have empathy. Nicole DePillo and Stephanie Bauer are right. Those can be narcissistic traits, but there's more to narcissistic personality disorder. For starters, NPD is a mental health condition and a pervasive pattern of behaviors that impacts all areas of life. Only psychologists and psychiatrists can diagnose it. The research says that most of us do have narcissistic traits, but it's unclear how common narcissistic personality disorder actually is. Researchers from the Cleveland Clinic say that up to 5% of people in the U.S. have it. The American Psychiatric Association's Diagnostic and Statistical Manual says symptoms for NPD include a grandiose sense of self-importance, a belief in superiority, and entitlement. That's a big thing. Uh, uh, the irritability. Uh, thin-skinned. They do not like to be told no. Tracy Hurt is a licensed professional counselor. She works with survivors of narcissistic abuse. Their uh, stability, their mental stability is questioned. The reality of where they're living at uh, and what they've gone through as uh, the periods of uh, invalidation for them. Uh, they could be scared. Um, they could be uh, confused. That's why Tracy urges people who think they are or have been in a relationship with a narcissist to get help. But she also cautions people against labeling others as narcissists without a proper diagnosis. For those who actually have MPD, uh, that creates uh, a sense of rejection uh, for them and also mar marginaliz marginalization. Uh, for them. And the other thing, it increases the stigma. A stigma, Tracy says, could keep individuals with NPD from getting the help they need. So when people are describing, maybe uh, describing somebody who maybe they think has those traits, maybe they could just call out that behavior? They or, could call out that behavior or they can call it antagonistic uh -huh. or disagreeable mm -hmm. uh, traits rather than using the clinical term. Uh, that uh, licensed professional should use. Stefania Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. And right now there is no cure for narcissistic personality disorder, but there is treatment. Experts recommend people with NPD to get therapy and possibly medication if they have other mental health conditions like depression. Tuesday morning, time check 617. Let's go ahead and check in with RJ. It looks a little foggy in some of these shots out there. Yeah, definitely. We're seeing this fog that roll through many parts of the city of San Antonio right now. So a couple of minutes ago, we showed you this shot here, 90 at State Highway 211. So this is going to be all of our traffic that's going to be coming in and out of the Castroville area. So this is a little bit past 1604 on the far west side. And you just see that uh, we do see headlights here, but again, low visibility in many parts of the area, especially in the far west side. And that's something that I know Justin probably touched on here in just a little 
little bit. But uh, the good news is that we haven't seen any major accidents on uh, many of our major highways. So that's some good news. Right now, people seem to be taking caution when they are headed out right now. We still have this crash being reported by the San Antonio Fire Department. Uh, multiple units out there, uh, but this is off of Loop 410 on the south side, Roosevelt Avenue, right there where uh, Roosevelt becomes 281. And um, again, it's being reported by the San Antonio Fire Department. Looks like it's possible vehicle extraction taking place there. So uh, multiple units there may take a little while to clear this out. And uh, that might be the reason why we're still seeing it on the website there. One smaller thing to let you know about right now, stalled vehicle being reported, I-10 eastbound and medical drive, but again, not causing any major delays. It's going to be for all of our traffic coming in from the Wurzbach area. The rest of the city, everything else is looking pretty good for the most part. Again, we've seen a uh, pretty good traffic flow throughout the morning, not seeing any major delays right now due to the fog, but it's definitely something that we are continuing to monitor this morning. <laughs> Okay. In a little. Thank you, RJ. Thank you, RJ. <laughs> mm -hmm, the yes. fog. Yes. Uh, the fog. <laughs> uh, that, that, that really is the big story this morning. Uh, but I, I think people are going to be a little confused as we get later into the week because there's a ton of changes headed our way temperature-wise. We want to make sure that uh, you're on top of as far as uh, what to expect. So let's first start with some of the headlines here. Uh, yes, fog leads the way. Low visibility for the commute. Uh, RJ just covered that. And as uh, we talk about the cold front, it uh, arrives tomorrow just after sunrise. So tonight it'll still be warm, but that front hits, I'd say, about 8 a.m. tomorrow. And that's when you'll start to notice some of the differences. It'll turn very windy and then cooler. And we may see a shower or two as we get into Thursday. Thursday, we're looking at highs only in the 50s, just to give you some perspective. So it will be uh, quite a change. Not to, uh, not this morning, though. It's still warm. 66 degrees at the airport, 68 New Braunfels. Uh, New Braunfels and Seguin, the warm spots uh, this morning. 63, both Bernie and Kerrville. And uh, visibility has been a problem for those uh, west of I-35, generally speaking. Bernie stage about a quarter of a mile visibility. Castroville, about three quarters of a mile. Uh, Hondo's uh, starting to come up a little bit as far as vi visibility is concerned. So that's the good news. Uh, but it's it's kind of in this corridor right here, Western Bear County, where the fog is at its worst. Okay, temperatures today up around 86. Another really warm day. This is well above average. Our average temperature this time of year right around 70. So you know, uh, yes, it is going to be very toasty. Uh, but our front, there it is, 7 a.m. right on our doorstep. Starts to push temperatures down into the 50s in the hill country. And then once it moves through by 10 a.m. tomorrow, we're looking at 50s here in San Antonio with that gusty north wind. It will feel very different. 61 noontime tomorrow, and then by tomorrow afternoon, we're in the mid-60s, so about a 20-degree temperature difference. Wind gusts tomorrow as high as 40 miles per hour, especially during the morning time. These winds are going to be howling for uh, several hours, and it will take until tomorrow evening for these winds to really start uh, subsiding some. So know that it will also be very windy. There's our front. Not a lot of rain with the front, but a low behind it will start to draw in some moisture. We'll get some sprinkles, perhaps. Nothing that's going to be terribly heavy. This is all going to be light stuff. But as it moves through, some sprinkles and maybe some drizzle by tomorrow evening before this all moves out of here. This is 10 p.m. Thursday. Uh, it'll take probably until Friday morning for these clouds to clear, but when they do, then temperatures will rebound quite a bit. Real quick, total solar eclipse, we've been doing the countdown 41 days now. And here's today's fun fact. Tens of millions of people live in the eclipse path. An estimated 31.5 million can see the total eclipse. Uh, that includes us here in San Antonio. The path includes cities like Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin, uh, just get up towards Cleveland and Buffalo. So there are quite a few cities in the path, uh, and we are now 41 days away. I think a lot of people though are going to choose San Antonio to come watch this uh, eclipse just because of uh, where we are and being a destination city. 65 tomorrow, 52 on Thursday. There's that big cool down and then our nice rebound on Friday. 75, we're back up to 80 on Saturday, and then some more rain chances show up by s Sunday and Monday. We'll be right back. RSV can severely affect the lungs and lower airways. But I'm protected with Orexv. Orexv is a vaccine used to prevent lower respiratory disease from RSV in people 60 years and older. RSV can be serious for those over 60, including those with asthma, diabetes, COPD, and certain other conditions. But I'm protected. 
Our RexB is proven to be over 82% effective in preventing lower respiratory disease from RSV and over 94% effective in those with these health conditions. Our RexB does not protect everyone and is not for those with severe allergic reactions to its ingredients. Those with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. The most common side effects are injection site pain, fatigue, muscle pain, headache, and joint pain. I chose RxV. RSV? Make it a RxV. In this morning's GMA First Look, fast food surge pricing? Two Dave singles. How much would it cost? Wendy's announcing plans to fluctuate their prices based on demand, meaning you could be paying as much as a dollar more for that Baconator during the lunch rush. Historically, you know, companies just set one price that was constant across time. Uh, pricing algorithms allow uh, companies to change prices throughout the day. It's a pricing model akin to the one used by rideshare companies, and consumers are giving it a frosty reception online. In general, customers don't like to be surprised about prices. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on what this new surge pricing could mean for the rest of the fast food industry. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. A man is in the hospital being treated for gunshot wounds, but San Antonio police say he is no victim. They believe he was shot while trying to commit a crime. Trina Weber is live outside the hospital where he went for help at the corner of Wood Lake Parkway and Old Seguin Road. And Katrina, you mentioned earlier that he is a suspect in a car burglary. That's what police tell us. They believe he was actually breaking into a car when the owner of the car came outside his house and then used bullets to stop him. Well, the man who was shot ended up here at this Baptist neighborhood hospital uh, where he came for help. Police say he collapsed right in the lobby. That car burglary and the shooting, they believe, happened about a half mile from here. Let me take you there with our video. This was about 3.30 this morning on a street called Caribou Creek. Now, the owner of the car says he heard someone breaking into to his vehicle, came outside and saw someone who he felt threatened him. He then uh, pulled out his own gun and shot that man multiple times. Police say that they found at least 10 shell casings outside the house. The man who was wounded jumped into a car, which police described as a red compact car, and then left the area. Now, a short time later, when that man walked into the hospital here uh, and collapsed, they did find a car matching that description in the parking lot. Police say there was blood in the car. So they do believe the man who showed up at the hospital is the one who was shot while breaking in into the car. They believe he had someone else with him, but that person was long gone by the time police caught up with uh, that, that suspect here at the hospital. So he was taken to another uh, facility for more treatment. The police say he was stable at the time, and that this time they don't think that they're going to file any charges against the owner of the car. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, Katrina, thank you. Well, good morning. It is Tuesday, February 27th. Thanks for starting your morning with us. Justin is in for Mike. And one of the first things you're going to notice for many of you this morning as you head out the door for work or school is once again the fog. Second day in a row. Mm -hmm. uh, the fog's moved a little bit, though. Yesterday was the east and southeast side. This go around. It's the west side of San Antonio seeing the fog. Birdie stage, Port SA. Airport's down a little bit. It hasn't been too bad yet. Uh, Castroville's uh, down about three quarters of a mile. So this is the corridor up towards Kerrville where you will see some of that fog and it may cause a few issues this morning. Our forecast calls for a foggy morning and then by midday we break out into some sun 75 and then another really warm day 86 is our forecast high with uh, partly cloudy skies. Southerly winds for now. Things change in a big way coming up tomorrow morning. Uh, we'll get a cold front through and that will cool us down quite a bit. Pollen count, this is yesterday's ash mulberry topping the list. The tree pollens starting to get pretty bad. We'll see where we end up today. We'll get that pollen count in here in about an hour. We'll pass it along to you as soon as we get it. So 86 degrees today, fog early. Then that cold front tomorrow, about a 20 degree temperature difference. 65 on your Wednesday with winds gusting to 40 miles per hour. Even cooler on Thursday. So you don't need to lose the jackets just yet. Have them with you tomorrow. Uh, trust me, you'll want them, especially as we get into 
uh, Thursday morning. We're going to talk much more about this forecast, but we got to get over to RJ now. Morning commute starting to pick up, and we got some fog out there. I would imagine we may start to see a few problems. Yeah, so uh, nothing major yet, Justin, but something we will continue to follow throughout the rest of our half hour here and through the rest of our morning. Take a look behind me here. You're taking a look at our farthest west camera that we have in terms of our trans guy cameras here. This was at 90 at State Highway 211. So this will be all of our traffic coming in and out of the Castroville area. As Justin just mentioned, we have low visibility out there. You see this thick blanket of fog affecting, uh, you know, some of our drivers out there. So just keep that in mind if you're about to head out right now on the far west side. Now we are seeing some things pop up across uh, the other parts of the city. We have a crash being reported here, Ritterman Road off of I-35, not causing any major delays at the moment. But again, Ritterman Road, very important street there for some of our drivers on the east and northeast side. We have a stalled vehicle being reported. Speaking of the west side, US 90 eastbound, our traffic coming in to, from uh, General Hudnall Drive. So if you are driving on the west side right now, you may run into a stalled vehicle being reported out there eastbound 90 at General Hudnall. Taking you out to the northwest side, we have another stall being reported. I-10 eastbound at Medical Drive and something that's not causing too much of a delay right now, but uh, keep that one in mind if you are driving on the northwest side right now. And we still have this crash being reported by the San Antonio Fire Department. The unit, the amount of units have gone down from six to one. So it seems like they may be clearing this out here sometime soon, especially for our drivers on the south side of town. This is off of 410 on Roosevelt Avenue. But again, another very important street that a lot of people use on the south side. So quick check of traffic here. Again, everything else is looking OK for the most part, seeing a lot of different things pop up, especially because we are seeing now more fog in the area. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. RJ, thank you. New this morning, it's been a violent night across San Antonio. As you can see on this map, San Antonio police responded to multiple shootings and cuttings overnight. We've been going over the details of several of these incidents throughout our newscasts this morning. One of those incidents happened on the south side of town just after 10 p.m. in the 400 block of Linda Lou near South Hackberry. Police say three to four suspects confronted a man on his front porch and eventually started shooting at him. The man was hit in the foot and later taken to the hospital. The suspects got away in a dark colored car. Police say the shooting was in retaliation for getting the suspect's friend in trouble. Another shooting happened a few minutes later, just before 11 p.m. near the intersection of Coleman and B Street, not far from Fort Sam Houston. San Antonio police say a man ran up to two teens, shot them both and ran away. The two victims were taken to the hospital in critical condition. So far, police do not have a good description of that suspect or motive for the shooting. In other news, last summer, three San Antonio police officers were fired after allegedly shooting and killing a woman in the middle of a mental health crisis. Now all three have appeared in court. Former Sergeant Alfred Flores and Officer Alizar Alejandro are each charged with the murder of Melissa Perez. The other former officer, Nathaniel Villalobos, is charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Prosecutors yesterday told the judge that the defense has all the evidence from last June's shooting, including body cam footage. The next hearing for this case is scheduled for April. Also in court, the trial for a former area band teacher is now underway. Mark Mallow is charged with possession of child pornography and promotion of child pornography. He is facing up to life in prison if found guilty. Back in August 2022, he was first arrested after Snapchat noticed the explicit media and reported it to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. At the time, Mallow was a teacher at Wood Lake Hills Middle School, which is part of Judson ISD. Now he does have other charges pending. He was re-arrested while out on bond for three different charges, including online solicitation of a minor. He will stand trial on a later date for those charges. Happening today, the long-awaited next episode of Texas Crime Stories premieres, and it's diving into the murder of a young San Antonio mother back in 2020. Eric Hernandez and Lee Waldman sit down to discuss the case of Jasmine Williams and break down all the people involved. Just 19, Jasmine Williams' life was violently stolen in front of her own children. What began as a planned robbery by some of her own friends escalated to a plan to kill her. Despite a mountain of evidence to implicate seven individuals, the wheels of justice seem to falter. I feel like a lot of stuff just went completely wrong, especially with them having priors. So it's like you slap them on the hand. Beyond the courtroom negotiations and plea deals, 
lies the hurt of a bereaved sister who believes Jasmine was cast aside by a system meant to protect and serve the victims of crime. I really feel like if my sister was 100% white, Kyle, John Tavian, all of them will have higher charges, 100%. I feel like they would have worked harder. This is Texas Crime Stories, Betrayed Justice. So a reminder that the latest episode drops later this morning, but right now on Quesa.com, you can re-watch the previous Texas Crime Stories that were featured. Just click on the Texas Crime Stories section under the KSET Plus tab. 6.38 on your Tuesday morning. So it's something you may not think about, but if you've had chicken pox in the past, you need to know about shingles. After the break, what you need to know to protect yourself. 642, welcome back. It is a new parent's biggest fear, a newborn with health problems. One to 2% of babies born have congenital heart disease. Our Patty Santos tells us the story of resilience behind a six month old who underwent open heart surgery days after birth. Parents Colin and Sarah Young felt pretty confident going into the arrival of their newborn Eleanor last summer. It actually felt a lot easier because it's our second kid, so mm -hmm. yeah, it was a normal day. That changed quickly. A few seconds after she was born, and um, she looked very purple. Terror and confusion quickly set in for the Youngs. Eleanor was rushed to NICU. It took about an hour. Uh, and then they uh, transferred her hospitals and got her into surgery right away uh, to, to give her some oxygen is, is kind of what they do. They blow a little hole in the heart. So, mm -hmm. That was yeah. her first surgery. Yeah. yeah, so she's technically had three surgeries. Eleanor was diagnosed with a congenital heart defect called transposition of the great arteries, or GTA. That's when two main blood vessels are in abnormal positions. Congenital heart disease is actually 1% to 2% of all pregnancies. Pediatric cardiologist Jennifer Johnson diagnosed Eleanor's condition. Johnson says sometimes a baby's heart problems can be diagnosed before birth, and she tries to assure mothers that there's nothing they did wrong. It's just that was what, when the child was developed, that was the way the heart developed. So it was nothing you did. I think she can conquer the world because she's already done and gone through so much. Six months since open heart surgery, Eleanor is meeting milestones and her parents hope her resilience will inspire others. To provide just hope for other families if they see themselves in a situation like this, um, that everything in life is just a season um, and, you know, it may not be the best or most exciting season of your life, but you can come, you can come out of it and there's joy. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Well, National Shingles Awareness Week is happening right now, and if you've had chicken pox in the past, you are at risk of developing shingles. A global survey shows 99% of U.S. adults over the age of 50 have the chicken pox virus in them. 86% of adults underestimate their risk of shingles. However, an estimated 1 million people across the U.S. will develop the virus this year. Once you have chicken pox in your childhood, the virus lays dormant or goes silent in your body for many, many years. And then as your immune system starts to decline naturally with age, it can reactivate as shingles. A common misconception about shingles is people don't think they're at risk because they're healthy. This condition took me by surprise because I, I consider myself healthy and active and I thought it was a pimple. Be very mindful if there are discomforts, pains or unusual occurrences happening to, you know, consult with your provider and uh, discuss further. Shingles often start out as a painful rash that blisters and scabs and it can take several weeks for it to clear up. The best way to prevent it from happening to you is by talking to your doctor. Something's going on way out at 1604 and Highway 90. Let's check back with RJ. Yeah, guys, taking a look at the far west side right now. And we mentioned earlier a lot of fog in that area. So we did expect things to get a little bit busy out there. And now we have uh, reports of, uh, of a crash right now at 90 eastbound there at 1604. Uh, this camera there, 1604 north, but this is actually 90 east and 1604 south. This is where those two highways kind of intersect right now. So again, just to cut off the phone with Trans Guy a little while ago, they're still trying to figure out some more information 
information out there, but we do know that there's a lot of flashing lights in this area. It's being reported again as a crash on 90 eastbound right now, 1604. And let's take a look at our maps and show you exactly what we're looking at in this area right now. Again, this is all of our traffic coming into town from the Medina Valley and Castroville area. And we're looking at at least a 35 minute delay right now for this four mile stretch of road here on 90. So it's going to take you a little while to get from 211 State Highway 211 all the way to 1604 and 90 and get past uh, what's being reported right now as a crash again on the eastbound lanes of 90 at loop 1604. That would be the southbound exit there. Now we're getting a little bit closer here into the inner west side here in San Antonio, US 90 eastbound General Hudnall Drive. So our maps are now showing this uh, stalled vehicle. I initially had this icon up there. Our maps are kind of catching up with us here in just a bit here. 90 eastbound General Hudnall Drive. Again, not causing any major delays in the inner parts of uh, uh, 410 and the loop. But again, we're seeing more of our delays out on the far west side of town right now. That's kind of the biggest thing that we're following at the moment as we take a quick look here at the rest of our transguide traffic shots here. We've cleared out that stalled vehicle there. I-10 eastbound at medical and it uh, looks like we've also cleared out that crash earlier on Riddiman and 35 on the northeast side. So again, seeing just a lot of fog, several parts of the city. Now we have that big crash there, 90 and 1604. All righty. Mm -hmm. Thanks, RJ. Thanks, guys. When should we brace for the cold? Well, I, <laughs> or cool you know, I, I, for cooler, the cooler. Yeah, I don't want to say cold because it's not going to be like you know, bitter cold, but it is going to be cool. It starts tomorrow, so that cold front gets here right about 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. So right after this show tomorrow, we'll be talking about gusty winds and, and cooler temperatures. It'll be about a 20 degree drop, so it is definitely cooler. And yesterday, I mean, we were sizzling here across the state. 100 uh, was the high in Colleen. That was the hottest temperature in the entire country yesterday. Del Rio tied a record at 96, 96 in Junction, 93 San Angelo. We got to 82 here in San Antonio. We had the benefit of a little extra cloud cover, a little more moisture. It kept temperatures from just soaring, but it will be hot again today. Don't know that we'll see numbers like that in Colleen, but it will be hot nonetheless. We're forecasting 86 here in San Antonio. There's the cold front. Windy tomorrow, 65. That's going to be the big cool down, but it gets even colder on Thursday, 52. And that's because we'll have clouds and maybe a few showers around. And then we very quickly rebound on Friday and then back near 80 on Saturday. So there's a lot happening just within a three or four day stretch here. Uh, just it'll keep you on your toes. But just know that uh, you don't want to put the jackets up yet because you may want them uh, coming up tomorrow on Thursday. 66 right now, cloudy south southeasterly winds at 7. Visibility still stuck at 3 miles at the airport. So the fog has not been that bad right around uh, the airport in San Antonio, but there are some spots that continue to see visibilities really drop. Bernie stage being one of them. Uh, Honda one and three quarters. Port S8 two and a half miles. Rest of the area looks okay as far as fog is concerned, but we may see some morning low clouds. They'll eventually burn off and then uh, we should get up around 86. All right, here comes the front. This is 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Front starting to move through. We're dropping in the 50s in the hill country, and we may drop into the 50s here in San Antonio. This will be around 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, and then by the afternoon, we're only working our way back up into the mid 60s. Uh, so definitely cooler and uh, windy for sure. This is going to be a, the other big story. Gusts to 40 miles per hour potentially coming up tomorrow. So if tomorrow's your trash day, uh, you may want to wait to put the trash can out because it. Uh, it may be rolling down the street. We've had several wind events this year, but this is going to be another one of them. With the front, I'm not expecting much rain, but there is a storm system that comes in behind this that may give us some overrunning with a few light showers showing up on Thursday. Uh, nothing that would uh, be terribly heavy, but some sprinkles, maybe a little bit of drizzle Thursday night before this moves out. Clouds clear out west to east on Friday. And that gives us the big warm up. So here it is all put together in seven day forecast. Windy 65 tomorrow. Uh, then we'll go 52 Thursday with some sprinkles, maybe a little bit of drizzle late. The mornings will be chilly Thursday morning 44, Friday morning 47. But we're up to 75 by Friday afternoon and we rebound all the way to 80 on Saturday before some more rain chances come in Sunday and Monday. This is the time of year where you would expect some variability in the in the weather and it certainly uh, is the case this week. Well, I was going to ask, you know, so for sure a coat, maybe like a heavier coat on Thursday morning, mm -hmm. but like yeah. as far as tomorrow morning, maybe just a sweater for yeah, later. Yeah, light jacket. Uh, yeah, you know, for you and me, maybe a big coat right. for everyone else. <laughs> 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 a parka. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. We'll be prepared. Thank That's you, right. Justin. <laughs>
to six, <laughs> 651, 66 degrees. And for now out there with live cam, this is not parka weather. 66 degrees is not bad and it's going to be a lot warmer this afternoon. We'll be right back. Well, she has only been teaching for three years, but she's already making a big impact on her students. I love my kids and I try to pour my heart into them every single day. Hey, that's you. That is me. <laughs> I get to meet her. <laughs> Coming up today on GMSA, GMSA at 9, we are going to introduce you to the lead ag science teacher at Clemens High School and KSET's Educator of the Month. Let's check in with our traffic teacher, Mr. Marquez. <laughs> yeah, I remember you posted some video out at the rodeo. I was wondering what you were doing out there, uh -huh. Stephanie. Now we know. All right, guys, taking a look here. We have a crash being reported 90 eastbound at Loop 1604. This is going to be right there where 90 east and 1604 south intersect. So a couple of major highways there. Seeing a pretty significant backup in this area as we show you our maps here real quick. At least a 30-minute, half-hour backup in terms of uh, this delay for traffic. So right now, if you're coming in from the Medina Valley, Casterville area coming in from State Highway 211. You're going to run into some pretty serious traffic out there. Again, a crash being reported 90 eastbound at Loop 1604 South. It's kind of the biggest thing that we're following at the moment, aside from the fog. Justin? Yeah, just email RJ for those notes if you need to turn one into your boss for being late. So. <laughs> Uh, 65 uh, coming up tomorrow. There's a big change. 86 today, so it'll be about a 20 degree drop and then down to 52 uh, Thursday. Thursday will be our coolest day. Uh, cloudy, sprinkly, maybe a few drizzle, uh, a little bit of drizzle during the afternoon and evening hours. Uh, then we rebound on Friday, so it's, it's just a lot of ups and downs this weekend. The weekend will be hot. Uh, back near 80 on Saturday. And I know at some point we want to start talking about getting in the mindset for spring severe weather. That can be right. a rough time of year. Yeah, I think I think as we get into March, if I'm looking ahead at the computer models, it looks like it'll be a little more active. So it is something definitely. Okay. okay. Well, then we'll just enjoy the roller coaster ride for right now. There you <laughs> Have go. A good day. Have a great day.